Alright, it's November 4th, 2006, and I'm up here in the beautiful fall weather in Yonkers and Van Cortlandt Park. Something I want to talk about, and uh, I want to talk about it here because when I bring it up in other places, it just feels too out there, too utopian, too uh, too much not about how to help young people right now, and uh, so I kind of hold back on my question that I want to begin to ask. But where else could I ask it? But uh, on my own video cast, I suppose. The question I want to ask and think about a little bit has to do with a new field of study. Now, just to suggest that I'm not totally crazy, there was in the Business Times a couple of days ago, an article about Tim Berners-Lee starting a new field of study called Web Science. And uh, that gave me yet another uh, nudge to suggest that what I'm feeling, that we need a new discipline um, called Web Studies, that's fine by me. Uh, alongside English and composition studies and literature studies. Now, I don't care, English could include all of those, but uh, it's the comparison of the difference between literature and composition that's uh, interesting to me. But, uh, you know, perhaps I need to step back just one second and talk about the need, the problem that I'm seeing. Um, Really, it's the difference that I'm seeing between some students and the work that I'm trying to do with them in what's called technology, or, you know, I try to call it new journalism, but new media studies. <laughs> um, and, you know, this year, I work with 6th through 12th graders, and the differences between those students who I've had for, in some cases, three and four years, and those students who I have now just started with or have had scattershot through high school. You know, maybe they took my class in ninth grade and I don't see them again until they're seniors. Uh, because I'm an elective, uh, the difference between those students and what they're capable of their habits, really, that they've not developed um, if they haven't had me on an ongoing basis, um, is what makes me begin to think about this question of needing our own discipline. The other direction that this question begins to come from um, comes from uh, a sense uh, from Stephen Downs to um, David Warlick and Will Richardson and Clarence Fisher, uh, bloggers that immediately come to mind. Um, getting more and more a clear sense of what this body of knowledge is that we're asking kids to learn. And I don't know if the field is getting more clear, or I just am getting more clear. Um, but I know what needs to be taught now. And, you know, it can't be done in a semester here and there. Uh, so, for example, I have my 6th and 7th graders uh, three days a week for one semester. The, uh, the habits of blogging 
which Chris Sloan and uh, Susan Entenheim and I started talking about recently, Madeline Brownstone as well, on Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, and Lee Baber, we're, we're recognizing that there, there are habits of blogging that develop and uh, take time to own and, and blossom. And number one, if you don't see kids often enough during the week, it's probably impossible to have those blossom. Now, I, uh, I think probably three times a week is the bare minimum and I do get to see my students that often but uh, how far I can take them in one semester is pretty limited and then th th that's only the habits of blogging there are other habits of uh, of wiki of collaborative writing that feel like I'll never even touch with these students so it's coming out of a frustration um, um, how I'm working now that I'm asking this question. And let me say right away that I have traditionally been an interdisciplinary thinker and this is a little weird for me to be thinking in terms of discipline, but it's a uh, the need for a body of research, the need for um, identifying exactly what it is we are doing in this field that makes me feel like we need our own discipline. So yeah, that's where I am. That's what I want to ask people about at NCTE in November, uh, coming up in a couple of weeks actually. Um, is anybody else feeling this? Is there anything we can do about it? You know, can we call a, a convention of uh, people together and, and say, look, like the Dartmouth convention was for composition people. All right, here's my understanding of that history. Um, teachers who had their PhDs in literature, and that's how you got a PhD to teach in English in the past, um, came together and said, you know what, we need to be able to get PhDs in composition, and we need to do studies in composition and teach classes in composition, and there's a whole field here of our own that's separate from literature, and I don't think anybody is saying, and I'm certainly not saying, that the composition is well, I, nobody in the composition field said that literature is not necessary. And I'm not saying composition is not necessary. Yet, I am saying the if it's a discipline, which I believe it is, the it here, I'm having difficulty naming, but Web 2.0, uh, let's just call it Web Studies for now. Uh, web Studies is a discipline that deserves as much attention in school as English gets and as much scope and sequence as history gets and mathematics and science and languages. You know, of course, I know that that feels impossible, yet I do, I do believe that uh, it needs that kind of attention. Uh, that, of course, throws the question back onto the planners of high school curriculum and thinking about how to include everything, but you know, adding one more discipline doesn't change that question. That question has always been there. And as soon as you, you know, limit yourself to English, math, history, science, and language, you, uh, you know, you've lost that question, I think, already. But, uh, so let me keep focused on our question. Do we have a field of study here? Is there a body of knowledge that is really separate from um, what's happening in the traditional English classroom and history classroom or social studies classroom? I think so. 
I think there are skills that students need to know. There are habits that they need to develop. There's a body of knowledge even that uh, they need to obtain that they're not getting in any English classes. And uh, since this is my first draft rant, um, initial thinking, let me just end this um, with a, a comparison of what I'm saying with what is normally said about technology. You know, there's a lot of talk about integrating technology. And I've said this before on blogs and podcasts and webcasts, but I, uh, I think we need to question that. Integrating technology is not what I want to be about anymore. Um, because I think the idea of that is that technology can make your life easier. Can, you can reach your goals better by using these tools. Um, and what's missing in that is the degree to which the traditional disciplines are missing what the goal should be. Uh, so, you know, there's some value. There's certainly value in, in teaching writing and, and uh, teaching how to in writing and so forth. You know, uh, how to s use tense correctly or how to do this or that. Uh, stay in the moment when you're writing in a narrative or whatever. Um, how to argue persuasively. Um, but these writing exercises are not enough. They're not uh, what a kid's going to need in order to be an effective communicator. So, I'm not about furthering the goals of the traditional disciplines with these new tools. I'm about adding to the traditional disciplines some new goals. And I think my next step in this will be to put together some writing in reference to this. Uh, Clarence Fisher recently put together a list of what kids need to know. I mean, for example, being able to use your archive um, is one thing. There's some other lists about digital writing that I'll refer to. I just want to find some things. Um, Will Richardson has a list of six things that he thought should be in the classroom right now. And uh, David Warlick has some really nice uh, three E's uh, about literacy right now. And uh, I'm going to refer to these things because I think these writers are beginning to define uh, the discipline that I'm talking about. And I think if you see that discipline, you'll see how different it is from the curriculum that is being taught in any uh, social studies, English or humanities class that I know of. And uh, so that's why I'm saying we need a new discipline. This is Paul Allison at Allison, A-L-L-I-S-O-N-P-R at gmail.com. And uh, tune in on edtechtalk.com for uh, dot net, uh, it is dot com, edtechtalk.com. Um, on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, and uh, for teachers teaching teachers. And that's also at teachers teaching teachers.org. Talk to you again soon. Bye. Extra. And the sun's up here running. In this race? That's not him. <laughs> I'm uh, going Cortland Park today. Well, here's an interesting question. Uh, in high school, 
you can, well, in New York you can't play football, but in many places you can play football or basketball, or you could do long, um, long running, cross country running. Which sport is closer to the kind of uh, habit and skill that you need in life? Playing team football or long distance running. Maybe it's just me again <laughs> because I do a lot of long distance running. But, uh, you know, I kind of think the track and field is, uh, and the cross country running is a discipline that's closer to what's needed in, uh, in life. It's uh, more proximal to what is needed. In the same way, I kind of think uh, new journalism and uh, new ways of thinking about technology and the new media, that whole area of discipline is much closer to track and field for life than it is football for life. Now, you know, I come from a place where <laughs> you don't have the established football teams, so uh, maybe I don't understand. but. I thought that was an interesting parallel, perhaps. Another extra here on Paul Ellison's video cast. Still waiting for Ryan to come in.